sleep. We're diving into better sleep tonight, and you have sent in some fascinating research. Seriously, CBD, honey, the science behind sleep cycles, you've got it all here. I'm ready. And it's actually pretty amazing how all of that stuff you just mentioned, it all kind of comes back to one maybe not so well-known system in the body, and that's the endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard of it, maybe maybe not, but uh, we call it the ECS for short. It's like your body's own air traffic control, making sure everything's running smoothly. The ECS, okay, so this ECS is involved in sleep too. It's not just making sure like my kidneys and everything else are working. Oh yeah, sleep, mood, your appetite, your immune response, the ECS is in on it all. Really just trying to maintain balance. Like, you know, scientists, they call that homeostasis. And that's where things get super interesting when we add in CBD to the mix. Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. You've got my attention. So how does CBD play into this whole ECS thing? Well, you see, unlike THC, THC directly binds to receptors in your ECS. And those are mostly in the brain, you know, the ones that give you that high feeling. CBD, CBD doesn't do that. It goes about it kind of in a roundabout way. No couch lock with this one. Got it. So, but it still affects sleep. Yeah. CBD is thought to interact with the ECS by, hmm, how can I put this? It slows down the breakdown of the endocannabinoids that your body's making naturally. It's kind of like giving your relaxation team a little boost. It allows those calming compounds to hang around a bit longer, you know, makes their effect stronger. Okay, so we're not hitting the party button in our brain like THC might. CBD is more like a gentle nudge toward just like chilling out. Yeah, exactly. And this is all directly related to its potential for improving sleep. By boosting that sense of balance in the ECS, CBD might be the key to silencing those racing thoughts and pre-sleep jitters that keep us from a good night's sleep. That makes a lot of sense, especially because you mentioned the ECS being involved in mood, right? I mean, if you're feeling super anxious or stressed, it's going to affect your sleep. Yes, absolutely. And this is where understanding those sleep cycles really comes in handy. Think of it like a symphony, okay, with different movements or stages that your brain and body cycle through all night long. Mm. The ECS, that's like the conductor, making sure each movement flows into the next one nice and smooth. So we've got our conductor, the ECS, and now we're talking sleep stages, or like you said, the movements in the sleep symphony. Tell me more about these stages, what's going on in our brains and bodies during each one. Okay, so picture this. Okay. You're drifting off, your eyelids are getting heavy, right? Yeah. At stage one. That's where your brain waves are beginning to slow down from that busy, you know, daytime rhythm. Your muscles loosen up and your body temperature drops just slightly. Oh yeah, like that feeling of finally relaxing after a crazy day. You can just feel everything kind of melting away. Exactly. And then, as you slip deeper into sleep, stage two, this is a big transitional stage, and this is where your heart rate, your breathing, they slow down even more. And your brain waves, those guys are continuing their, their descent into those slower frequencies that are associated with sleep. So we're moving away from that light, dozy feeling into something deeper, but we're not quite at deep sleep yet, right? Right. Stage three, that's where the magic really happens, the magic of deep sleep. And here's where we see those delta waves, you know, those slow, rhythmic delta waves. They're like the main event in your brain's electrical activity now. The silent disco. We talked about that earlier. You know, one of the things I was reading about deep sleep is that it's when our body is like really get to work, repairing and restoring. Something about growth hormone being released. Yeah. Deep sleep, it's essential for physical restoration. Your body's repairing tissues, building up those muscles, strengthening them, and you know, re replenishing your energy stores. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, that growth hormone you're talking about, it's a key player in this whole process. Mm -hmm. So it's literally like hitting the reset button. Our physical selves are getting a total refresh. No wonder we feel like we got hit by a truck when we don't get enough sleep. I know, right? Right. And it's not just about feeling, you know, groggy and sluggish. Remember we were talking about the ECS and how it's involved in, like, regulating the immune system? Yeah, yeah. Well, deep sleep, that's prime time for your body's, like, defense forces to recharge and build up their strength. Okay, so if I'm skimping on deep sleep, not only am I going to be dragging the next day, but I'm also... Basically, what, inviting every cold and flu virus to come on in? Basically. Yeah. And now, for the grand finale of our sleep symphony, REM sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep. Here it is. You know, it just, it blows my mind that our brains are almost as active during REM sleep as they are when we're awake. I know. It's wild. It's buzzing with activity. Consolidating memories, processing emotions, strengthening those neural connections, all happening while you're catching those Zs. Our brains are working overtime, but at least our bodies are finally getting a chance to just chill. 
Yeah, you could say that. And this is where we tend to have those those really vivid, sometimes super bizarre dreams. Speaking of dreams, I wrote this down. Something about honey. Maybe playing a part in what we dream about. Like more vivid dreams with honey. Have you heard about this? That's really interesting. I, I haven't actually come across that specific research myself, but... But, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Remember we were talking about honey, especially raw honey, and how it can have those subtle effects on your blood sugar levels throughout the night? So, wait, are we saying that the honey, by keeping your blood sugar steady, could mean fewer of those annoying wake-up calls in the middle of the night? And that could lead to more, I don't know, more intense dreams because it's not interrupting our REM sleep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's almost like it's making sure your brain is getting a nice, even supply of energy all night long so those dream centers can really, you know, really go wild. Okay, see, now that's what I'm talking about. Honey doing even more than we thought. Yeah. But before we get lost in dreamland, let's pull back for a sec. We've hit on a lot. Sleep stages, ECS, CBD, now, honey, it's a lot. What's the big takeaway for everyone listening? Well, it all comes down to this, really. Getting good sleep, truly restful sleep, it's, well, it's about way more than just how many hours you're clocking in bed. It's about creating the right environment, the best conditions for all those amazing systems in your body to work their magic, right? I mean, we're talking regulating your mood, your immune system, repairing your body, even the way you process memories. It's all connected. And if I'm hearing you right, while CBD and honey can definitely help, it's not about relying on the like some magic solution, right? Mm. We still need those healthy sleep habits. We talked about the routine, the cool, dark room, all that stuff still matters. Oh, 100%. Those habits are the foundation. It's like setting the stage for everything else to work. You're basically giving your body's natural sleep-wake cycle the best possible chance to do its thing and letting those sleep stages we talked about flow naturally. So no matter what, Prioritizing those healthy sleep habits, that's always step one. Then, if you want to see if CBD or honey can add to that, it's about figuring out what works best for you, right? Start slow, see how your body reacts. Exactly. It's like fine-tuning a musical instrument. You're making small adjustments, paying attention to how your body responds until it just clicks. And, of course, I always have to add, if you're dealing with any health issues or taking medications, talk to your doctor before adding anything new to your routine, just to be safe. Can't argue with that. Well, there we have it. We've traveled through the world of sleep, from the science of sleep cycles to this powerful ECS and even the unexpected benefits of CBD and honey. So much to uncover about getting a good night's sleep, huh? It just shows how incredible and complex the human body really is. And the more we learn, the more we see that everything's connected. You know, you just touched on something that really got me thinking. It's like both CBD and honey, even though they work in totally different ways, they both seem to help by supporting what your body's already doing naturally. Instead of forcing a specific result, it's more like working with your body, not against it. Such a great point. And it goes back to what we keep coming back to, this idea of really paying attention to what your body's telling you and figuring out what works best for you. Exactly. There's no magic formula for sleep that works for everyone. It's about trying things out, seeing what feels right, and hey, you might be surprised at what you discover. I love that. On that note, I think we've given everyone a lot to, well, sleep on. Sweet dreams, everyone. And until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those questions, and keep diving deep into the world around us. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm -hmm.